Here we are into the month of June and the list of new releases on music and video just never stops. We're joined by the boys of Bull Moose, Brett Wickard and Chris Brown. Thanks guys so much for coming in. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Let's start with a movie that didn't do so well, as well as expected, A Wrinkle in Time. Let's stop and get a preview first. Who's alive? We believe he is. And the only one who can find him is you. You're kidding. Do I look like I'm kidding? A little. I'm not. Okay, so what was it about this one? I mean, obviously, a lot of great characters in here. Yeah, and on paper you say, wow, you know, based on the classic novel, you know, and incredible, uh, uh, you know, visuals, incredible cast, incredible director, this is gonna be an amazing movie, and I think where it misses is it tried to do too much. They try to pour too much into it, and, and that, um, and that it kind of, you know, frankly overstretched a little bit. And if they could have pulled, if they didn't try to do so much of the internal development versus the visuals, it could have been a stronger movie. Still visually incredibly appealing, tons of extras on the Blu-ray, like a, a deleted scene, so they even had to cut some from it. But, uh, um, but it, it, it's what could have been almost rather than what was. Mm -hmm. So it's still worth it to see kind of the, the beauty of this and yeah, yeah, it's uh -huh. unbelievably yeah. great. I mean, the visuals are ridiculously good. Okay, this one, Avatar Last Bender. Chris, you specifically like this one, right? Well, I think it was uh, Nate, actually, producer. But yes, um, people who, you know, was on Nickelodeon in the mid-2000s, three seasons of it, and this is the first time that it's being issued on Blu-ray. It was on DVD before, but there were a lot of just like weird video artifacts in that. And so for this, they've upscaled it from standard def to high def and tried to fix a lot of those weird things that happened when it was like last time around. And, there's and they did a, a very good job on it. But, but folks should know that it still does have the black bars on the side because it was originally made mm -hmm. in standard definition, but it's much crisper and looks, you know, fans of the series will absolutely get this and love it. On to a music release. Ghost has a, a new album out. What can you tell us about this? Well, they are a, <laughs> I mean, visually I know, very strange band. I don't know if I band. like that hesitation. That doesn't bode well, does no, it? No, no, we'll say that. that <laughs> what if people to listen to it for yeah, a second, I thought. Yeah, 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 that this is, we believe that this is, I think we both agree that this is a giant breakthrough album for the band and one of the, the best metal albums out in a long time. And, uh, it's, you know, really great metal albums, like this kind of harkens back to 80s metal. They have a theme underneath it, so this whole uh, uh, album is thematic on, on a plague and a balance off whether or not religion helped society or hurt society. I mean, it's really brilliant. That video doesn't look like it's from 2018. That video looks like it's from 1988. Yeah. It really does. I mean, it's just got that sort of cheesy 80s vibe to it. Yeah, there's not much in there that sounds like it didn't ha couldn't have been recorded in, in uh, you know the early 80s. Yeah, it could have been a Black totally Sabbath album. Back Even now, though, right? Yeah, and well, you both like the music. Artists. You think the music's good? I think it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Another new release, Father John Misty. Tell us about this. Well, he is <clears throat> sort of a on the folk side in, in uh, the indie world, um, kind of root, almost roots rocky, but uh, a little artier. Uh, and Father John Missy's um, yeah. pseudonym for Josh Tillman. You yeah, know. and he, he was the drummer in Feet Foxes for about four years. So he's, he's been around for a while. This is, I think, the third or fourth album under the John, Father John Misty moniker. And it's a really nice rock album with a lot of, uh, a lot of ups and downs to it. It's not never gets like really heavy or, or loud or screamy or anything. But very deep and very melancholic mm -hmm. and a lot of it kind of egocentric in kind of an interesting way. And he's coming to uh, Portland in July, I think it is. But, uh, but yeah, so he'll be at Thompson's Point. Oh, July 29th. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. One more. Ryo Fukui. Yeah, there are, so he, the two albums that he recorded in Japan, he's, he's a Japanese jazz pianist, they recorded in the 70s, were never released in the U.S., but they're just sort of known. Um, and so these are the first reissues of these two albums, and uh, they're both uh, piano trio records, so he's just got an acoustic bass and drums with him, and they're just really nice. Brent, any observations to add? Definitely. Like, well, the collectors will be either excited or disappointed at the value. Like right now, people are paying like fifty to eighty dollars for these, and now they can get them inexpensively. So you're either like, "Why did I pay so much?" or you're excited. <laughs> Always so, the danger. Yeah. So the insiders sold about nine months ago. <laughs> they unloaded right. those fifty and eighty dollar albums then. Well, when they were a announced move. a few months ago, there was a big explosion of excitement in kind of 
in a certain corner of the jazz world. Yeah. All right, five new releases, all of them appealing to a different audience. As always, <laughs> thanks for coming in, guys. Chris Brett from Bull Moose, and we'll be back in a moment.